Good morning. For those of you who don't know, my name is Maya Karen. I run a fashion blog called Classically Kept. It does feature luxury, contemporary, and how to style and now natural hair care. So if you were into any of those things, please consider subscribing to my channel. Click the notification bell. That way you will never miss a video. So today we need to talk about two situations that surround natural hair that have gone viral. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first situation that went viral is from an African podcast. It's bad and bougie. First, we're going to watch the video, listen to what the woman has to say, and then we will come back and we will discuss and I will give my thoughts. That's, you know, a lot of African women, especially when we're talking about beauty, it's about the hair. That, like, I feel like that's the beginning of beauty for a lot yeah. of African women, you know, natural hair versus wigs or weaves. What's your take on it? Your natural hair is good for church programs. I beg your pardon. Your natural hair is good for when you want to pick your kids I at school. Your <laughs> Don't bring your natural hair to my event. What? Now, of course, you try to like soften the blow by saying, I'm a lover of natural hair. Mm. I had natural hair. I relaxed it. I cut my hair like every year. Mm -hmm. I grow my natural hair back. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Maybe going to play with my niece is cool. If I'm in my house, <laughs> it's okay. But why would I want to wear a nice ass dress, expensive dress? Mm -hmm expensive ears mm. at least i'll do ponytail okay so we just got finished watching the video or an excerpt from the interview so let me go ahead and say this i have not watched the full interview i think the full interview or the full episode is around maybe like an hour to an hour and a half i have only watched the episode or the excerpt that people keep talking about that has gone viral right so we're solely talking about this portion of the interview because later on in the video she will make a statement where she basically tries to double down or she basically tries to apologize to her community right so the very first thing that I want to say, and you guys already know what I'm going to say, her thought process, her idea, her mindset around natural hair and her statements are just further perpetuating the negative stereotypes that surround natural hair, right? You guys know this, you guys know what I stand for, and it is a hill that I will die on, right? The second thing is she talks about, or she makes it very clear, number one, she does not want you wearing natural hair to her event, but she makes it very clear that natural hair is only appropriate, welcomed in certain situations, right? You can wear your natural hair at home. You can wear it to the PTA meeting. You can wear it picking up your child, but you're not really supposed to wear it to like a wedding, to a special occasion, to a cocktail, to red carpet. I know several women, number one, myself included, who wore their natural hair on their wedding day and looked absolutely gorgeous. My hair was in its natural state, or not in its natural state, my hair was stretched, it was blow dry. And then my hairstylist for that day styled my hair. But there was no hot comb, there was no flat iron, there was, there was no Dyson, there was none of that. My hair was natural for my wedding day. I felt beautiful, my husband felt like I looked beautiful, and everybody at my wedding was telling me, you know, how beautiful I was. Of course, you're supposed to do that, right? But saying that natural hair is not appropriate in some environments is odd to me. One, because it's the hair that grows out of my head, right? And two, you are perpetuating this idea that natural hair is only appropriate in certain environments. The other thing that I do want to point out is she made a point to talk about the event and she gave an example and she said, you have on your most expensive dress, a, the most beautiful dress, you have on the most expensive shoes, the most beautiful shoes. Basically, why would you want to ruin that with wearing natural hair? And then she said she would at least want to wear a ponytail or she would at least wear a ponytail. So based on her statement, it would seem that when you were at your best, when you are looking, you know, your most beautiful, when you are going to, I guess you could say the highest of high events, your natural hair is not appropriate, okay? Now, I typically do not talk about someone's appearance whenever we get into these discussions because you guys know that we have a lot of natural hair discussions on this channel however i do want to comment because that's what we're talking about we're talking about an appearance we're talking about hair right i just want to say i just want to give that disclaimer you opened the door when you made this statement right so i'm going to comment on it solely because that's what we're talking about 
and you made a statement and it needs to be said. For the young woman who made the statements, she has on a black headband and she has a black wig on. The wig looks stringy and old, okay? It does not look good. That's just the truth. It doesn't look good. All three women are equally beautiful. All three women have beautiful complexions. But the wig that is on your head at this current moment, because we're talking about showing up to events, right? I don't know, you know, maybe she didn't, wasn't able to get to the hairdresser in time. Don't know the circumstances, but I'm solely speaking about it because the door was opened, right? The wig on your head does not look good. It looks stringy, it looks old, it looks like it hasn't been combed. And then typically when you see females wearing that headband, it's because, I don't know, they need a touch up or you know the wig needs to be redone, right? They're typically hiding something. The last young woman who has like the light brown or like the blondish, blondish wig, the bob. <laughs> it looks like it's sitting on top of your head and it just looks so unnatural. So to that, I will say this for the woman in the black or the one with the black wig. You would rather I show up in your wig, the braid wig or the blonde, blonde slash brown wig to one of your events than with my natural hair looking like this or that typical bouffant that I do, right? That typical updo that I do, right? Like I said, I'm not trying to come for their appearances. I'm just making a, I'm making a point. I'm making a statement. I'm giving an observation. You're talking about appearances. You're talking about wigs. And the wig that you have on your head at the current time or at the time of the interview does not look good. During the podcast episode, she kind of doubled down and talked about, you know, how she loves natural hair. She cuts her hair. She relaxes her hair. So apparently for her, that was not enough. So then she released a statement and I'm just going to go ahead and read it. What she says is, may we never become victims of miscommunication. The media and those who control the narrative are truly not to be trusted. In the course of last month, I had a podcast interview and I thought we had a pleasant conversation. I apologize if certain things were taken out of context, but I promise you half of the narratives and the cuts and join Clips flying around are maliciously being used as clickbait by the producers of the said podcast, and I refuse to be bullied or silenced into submission. Maybe I didn't articulate or communicate certain things correctly, but that's 100% for sure not how the conversation went or the intended meaning. Blogs often post a doctored and overly exaggerated parts for that who don't watch the full show for clickbait, which is image denting. I'm used to my name being dragged through the mud at any slight inconvenience, but it's not the main issue here. Everything about that show was edited and manipulated for the self-aggrandizement and malicious intent of the publishers and major for clicks. Views and perceptions monetization and to mar slash tarnish my image, which I never understand why. I don't involve myself in petty conversations and that's why I always ensure to keep my circle small. I explicitly told the hosts and producers not to share the video immediately after shooting as I realized they were intentionally looking to create controversial content around me because there was a miscommunication with one of the hosts. So that is the statement that she put out following the podcast. Um, I will say this to her defense because I'm trying to be I'm trying to be neutral about the situation. Stepping into the content creation realm, stepping into the world, stepping into this world, and as someone who edits all of my content, every word that you see, every video, every photo, every transition, I do that. So when she said that some things were misconstrued, some things were chopped and screwed, Production does have a way of chopping and screwing things to give off a certain narrative or to send a certain message. So to her defense, I can understand where she's coming from because being behind the scenes, being on the other side of it, I definitely know that there are ways for, you know, sound bites, B-roll, and the way that people answer questions. I know there are ways to manipulate that. However, she should have known that when she made that statement, 
that there was going to be contention, there was going to be controversy. If that's how you truly feel, that's how you truly feel. And that's fine. So I just wanted to put that out there because she felt so moved by the situation and so moved by the episode that she wanted to put a statement out, which like I said, it's fine. First of all, for someone who doesn't know her, doesn't know what type of content she produces, doesn't know really what her line of business is or what her brand is about, and this is just popping up on my feed, for me, for a person that is on the outside looking in, solely looking at that soundbite of the interview, you 100% ex you exactly said what you meant. And I'm, I'm going to stand by that. Okay, so now let's move to the woman pastor who went viral for her speech. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the video. You dress up and join them. Show yourself friendly, and then you will have friends. All of you will be carrying natural hair about. Who, who natural hair help? Okay. Better, better wear your wig. I'm doing like this. I'll be flipping it. Go and spend that money on hair. Spend, draw your brows. Buy lip gloss. Look good. Natural hair is not selling market. When you marry, you off your wig. Hey, because you have entered. There's nothing they can do about it. But before you enter, don't be caught on fresh. Never. Package yourself well. Okay, so we just finished playing the video and I wanted a little bit more context because I see that she's standing. I can't necessarily tell if she's in a pool pit, but it did not seem like a typical or a regular sermon. So I did a little bit of research and she was actually, I believe, speaking at like a singles convention or like a singles event for women. So I just wanted to put that out there because the message that she was giving didn't seem like it was supposed to be a message for like, a sermon for Sunday, like, like a sermon for Sunday church or for a sermon for like men and women. Right. So basically what she is saying is, you know, and if you couldn't understand her, basically she, and which, which I do agree with, you know, always come out of the house presentable, right? If you're looking to meet someone, you can't sit in the house, right? Go out with your friends, make sure you're smiling, make sure you, you know, make sure you're strumming up conversations. You can't sit in the house and a husband is not just going to plop on your front doorstep, right? This is not the stork situation. The stork is not going to bring you a husband, a man, a partner, a mate, whatever. So that part I do agree with. The part that I do not agree with is that in order for you to get a man, a mate, in order to be married, in order to get engaged, you need to wear a wig. She's talking about, you know, the wig and who has natural hair helped and talking about flipping it. You know, when you get married, then, you know, you can take the wig off because it's, you know, because you're married and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, it'd be a little harder, but the man can still leave. But again, as I said before, in the beginning of this video with the other situation, you're, you're, you're painting this narrative or you're giving this message that natural hair is not beautiful you can't get a man, you, you can't enter into a relationship, it's not acceptable. If you're trying to trap a man or if you are trying to attract a husband, you need to wear a wig or you need to wear something that is agreeable or more, I guess you could say, societally acceptable, okay? To wrap up this video for both of these women, the podcaster or the, the, the guest for the podcast and then the pastor. I am in no way trying to bash, talk about, disrespect, or condescend them. Their comments and their ideas that surround natural hair are part of a bigger issue. We are being indoctrinated. We are being groomed. We are being raised to think that the hair on our head is just simply not good enough. It's not acceptable and it's not beautiful, right? Whether it be in Africa, whether it be in the Caribbean or whether it be here in the United States, okay? We have young women who are being raised to believe that their hair or the hair that grows on their head, and I will add a complexion in there, there, we, ha we have a society of women or we have generations of women who are being raised, even though it's not intentional, we have, an, we have a society of women who are being raised to believe that their complexion is not beautiful just the way that it is and that the hair on their head is beautiful, is not beautiful just the way that it is. 
And it's a problem because it seems like with each generation, it seems like it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. There are women who will not leave their house without makeup and without a wig, okay? And I'm not even talking like being out, out, like running errands and hanging out and going to events, going to the movies and meeting up for dates. There are women who will not leave their house in a wig or with their hair being done to run an errand, to run to the grocery store, to go to the mailbox, to go pick up their kids from work, uh, from school, or to go to a PTA meeting, to go to the gym, to go to the playground. And it shouldn't be like that. There should not be this pressure on women to look a certain way or to live up to a certain standard, especially when they're never going to be able to live up to that standard, okay? So I just wanted to say that both of these women and, you know, whether either one of these women have actually experienced discrimination or have actually experienced a bias towards themselves when it comes to their natural hair, maybe they attempted to wear their natural hair and it was just a bad outcome or a terrible experience. It's part of a much bigger issue that we really need to start having a conversation about and we really need to sit down with our younger women, especially our girls that are up and coming, and we need to have conversations with them about how beautiful they are naturally, okay? I know some people might think that this is a very vain subject. I know some people might say, you know, why are you checking for somebody else's appearance? But it bothers me when I hear a four or five and a six year old girl talk about how ugly her complexion is. It bothers me when I hear a five, a six, a seven or eight year old talk about how nappy their hair is or talk about how they are so happy that their mother gave them a relaxer. It bothers me when, a, when an 11 year old has a conversation with her mother about getting a weave or getting a wig or how she is so excited to get a relaxer. That is a baby, that is a child. She has not yet even begun to grow and begun to flourish. And this image that she that is being painted to her, that again, her complexion and her natural hair or the hair that grows out of her head is not beautiful, is a problem. So I don't want this video to be too long. Let me know your thoughts in the comments in this community. I am so glad that we can keep our debates. If you do not agree, respectful. I just want to remind you here on YouTube, I do upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And of course, right here or right here, I'll put my Instagram handle. Thank you so much for hanging out with you guys. Bye. We always have it coming.